Hey, Bedrock Roanoke. Um, I hope you guys are doing well. I'm coming to you from the quarry today. Just wanted to share with you just a quick uh, devotional that really encouraged me today, and I hope it encourages you. I heard a story today of uh, a jumper who was on a ledge and ready to jump, and the policeman was helping him out um, on the ledge there beside him, and he said, listen, man, don't, don't jump, don't jump. Why don't you tell me your problems and I'll, and I'll tell you my problems and we'll talk through this. And so after a few hours of uh, them sharing each other's problems with each other, uh, the policeman reached over and took a jumper's hand and they both jumped. We're all carriers of something and today uh, you might be a carrier of worry and worry uh, transfers from person to person just as much as any virus does. There's a lot of scriptures that teach us and tell us uh, not to worry. In fact, Jesus says, don't worry. Uh, you, you can't get any stronger in how he says it. And so today, I wanted to remind you a couple of those, of a couple of those scriptures uh, that, that <clears throat> tell us not to worry. Um, in Isaiah uh, chapter 26, verses 3 through 4, it says, you keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever for the Lord God is an everlasting rock. We have this picture here of God being this creator, this sustainer, this being who is beyond us by far. Uh, transcendent holy is a way that the Bible describes him. And so this all-powerful being says, if you keep your mind stayed on him, who he is, what he can do, what he has done, uh, there's this peace that comes over us. And um, Paul actually calls it the peace that passes all understanding. But there's another passage <clears throat> in Matthew that I think draws this even closer to where we are when Jesus is speaking to the people, he's asking them not to be anxious, not to worry about things. And he says, when you get worried, look to the birds. Uh, look at the lilies of the field. They don't concern themselves with what they're going to eat or what they're going to drink or how they're going to be cared for. But, but it, then he says this, these words. He says, your heavenly Father feeds them. So we have this Isaiah picture of of God being huge, transcendent, above us, something that we could never become, uh, that we can trust in, and the peace uh, passes, all understanding will fill us. But now we have this creator and sustainer and the one who holds everything in existence in the palm of his hand. Now we have him referenced as our father, that he's daddy. And so... There's a comfort that comes in knowing who your father is. I heard one pastor say, uh, our problem is that we don't see God as daddy, that we don't see him as father. When Jesus taught us how to pray, how did he start? He, he says, our father, Abba, daddy, this intimate, personal relationship. So I wanted to encourage you with that today. Just as, as this world may, may seem like the Titanic right now, uh, we serve a great big God who holds everything in the palm of his hand. None of this has surprised him. But not only is he this big God, he is this intimate father. And we come to this relationship to know him as father through Jesus. So if you're a child of God today, if you have come to a saving faith in Jesus Christ, then you can go to your father today in the midst of many these troubling times that might be causing some anxiety and fear and stress and worry. And he's going to tell you to stop it, to trust him. He says, look, go bird watching. Those little birds don't concern themselves with anything, and yet your heavenly father feeds them. Your heavenly father. He knows you. He loves you. He's got everything in control. Mm -hmm.